Washington Grown is made possible by funding from the Washington State Department of Agriculture and the USDA Specialty Crop Block Grant Program. And by the Potato Farmers of Washington. Learn why Washington is home to the world's most productive potato fields and farmers by visiting potatoes.com. On this special season of Washington Grown, we're following Washington produce around the world. Here we go. <laughs> I mean, there's just stuff happening everywhere. Breakfast, Breakfast lunch, lunch, or dinner. dinner. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm doing all, all the work over here. <laughs> That's a Tomas Deluxe. All good things are better shared, right? Cheers, my friend. Cheers. <laughs> I can't even walk. <laughs> we got a lot to explore and a lot to do, so let's get to it. <laughs> to Washington. To Washington. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Gortz and welcome to Washington Grown. Here in Washington, we grow amazing food and people all over the world rely on us for their food security. In today's episode, we're talking about Washington's trade partnerships. Tomas is visiting a trade show in Orlando, Florida. You could get lost in here. <laughs> and I'm making a gooey duck dish at the Bali Asian Bistro in Airway Heights. This is the strangest looking thing I've it's, ever seen. It, it's a called a gooey duck. It's just so <laughs> ugly, but delicious. Then I'm learning how Vietnamese importers are bringing high quality Washington grown fruit into the country. How do you say pear in Vietnamese? Pear, yeah, le, le. Le, 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 le. Yes, that's it. <laughs> All this and more today on Washington Grown. A few years ago, we visited a special little restaurant in Airway Heights that had a huge heart. Go get it, Mama Jeannie. Try my best. <laughs> We're almost there. Here at Dibali Asian Bistro, Owner Jeannie Choi works hard to make sure her customers are satisfied day in and day out. There's nothing bad on the menu, it's delicious. There's something I really like it in Spokane or the Airway Heights area. And the smells just make you hungry. Today we are back and hungry for more, eager to learn about Mama Jeannie's experiences traveling and cooking around Southeast Asia. We're preparing a special bowl of soup to sit and chat over. Hi, Christine. Hola. Nice to see you. Hello. Welcome to see you. You still look gorgeous. As do you. I'm so excited to cook with you again. Oh, thank you. Yes. It's my owner all it's, the time. And we're going to make a dish yes. with, with gooey duck, right? Yes. We're going to be having for the Washington veggie with the gooey duck soup. And we're going to be prepared for the four cup of the broth, whatever your favorite. And we're going to be have a add up for the ginger for the little bit of tartness. That was a lot of ginger, wasn't it? I think <laughs> overcutting, I'm sorry. <laughs> we add some lemongrass, kefir lime leaves, sugar, fish sauce, and lime juice, and bring it to a boil. Food doesn't have to put on a lot of ingredients, but it must be delicious, yes. Cooking with a love, it's always the best way for. You put on your heart yeah. and people feel it. We add some Washington-grown onion, carrots, mushrooms, and pre-blanched Washington gooey duck, and then let it boil for two minutes. Just have it waiting on another one minute for voila, it's done. Voila. <laughs> it's easy and very simple. <laughs> Shall we? Yes, yes, I want to try it. It's delightful. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> it's zippy. <laughs> yeah, it's tangy. I yeah, love it. It is. That's yeah. very good. So tell me about um, your experiences in the food industry in Southeast Asia. When I was ahead of traveling and working in Southeast Asia, uh -huh. I'm always been the welcoming to my friends and there's a family. Yeah. They are so welcoming. They are so loving and tender and a care heart. Uh -huh. So I want everybody coming into the Diwali store, mm -hmm. they feel like the same experience of what I did before. I want to share those kind of experience with our community. Yeah. I've been having the troubles and working at all of the Southeast Asia. Yeah. So it was kind of like a roadmap for about what I've been through and how I've been having to take care. This is kind of like showing the love to our guests yeah. and uh, our community. Sharing yes. your experiences yes. through food. Yes. Yeah. Stay tuned because later in the show, Mama Jeannie is going to show me how to make a special Washington gooey duck stir fry. Good job, oh, Chris. Thank you. I know I'm doing you're all, all the work over here. <laughs> no, you're amazing. Hey 
everyone. I'm here in Orlando, Florida at the Global Produce and Floral Show, where many of our local farmers and food reps are sharing the beauty and the bounty of our state with the rest of the world. Here at the trade show, companies you might recognize from the grocery store gather to celebrate produce and network with their customers. And let me tell you, this place was absolutely massive. So you know I had to go explore. They have everything you could find here. Avocados from Mexico. Now check it out, a little taste of home, mariachi band right here. You could get lost in here. <laughs> I spoke with a few of the attendees to find out why an event like this is so important. It's just a great place for everybody to come and see what's new in, you know, one big show. Is it fun to come to a, something like this? Oh, you meet so many fun people, and the fact that everyone is excited about potatoes makes me excited about what I do. There's nothing like face-to-face -face interaction with these people. You know, some of these customers I've been doing business with for 10 years. A lot of trade is really dependent on relationships. And tasting the products, touching the products, seeing it is important, but also just that one-on-one -on -one Building a relationship is really critical. To meet face to face, you can't really fake that, you can't really <laughs> yeah. substitute that with Zoom. It's just a way to kind of showcase everything that our growers have been working hard for at home and um, yeah, just show them the awesome fruit that we can grow. I don't want to get it out of bounds, and then I'm gonna egg. And look, look what I get for my efforts. A famous Idaho potato squishy. Idaho, what? Although many states showed up to represent their products, Washington's booth had a very special theme, not to mention a handsome face on it as well. Hey, I know this guy. Washington produces th over 300 crops and we've got to find buyers for them and, and places to go with them. So um, I think it's important just to get out and, and talk about Washington growing crops. It makes me really proud, honestly, coming from Washington and, and seeing all of these companies here that were willing to make the trek across the country and just seeing the representation, being able to show off what we have, our products. Yeah, it makes me really proud to be from Washington and to represent agriculture. We hear the term eat local yep. a lot, but it seems that we still need to eat globally as well. Would you agree on that? A hundred percent. I mean, you can't get Washington apples in Florida if you eat local. That message of eat local, it, there's more to it. It's about knowing your producer and knowing where your food is coming from. And at a show like this, we're able to make that connection. Booths across the aisle from us have fruits that I've never seen before, and it's fascinating <laughs> yeah. to me. And then there's countries that don't have access to the fruits and vegetables that we have. And so it is very important that we do feed the world. The world of agriculture and food is amazing. Most of the general public, I don't think, appreciates or has an idea of what it entails from the moment things are planted until they're harvested and consumed, and, and every all the different components that go into that. The Global Floral Produce and Trade Show is quite a convention. With so many products on display, I think the best booth was the Washington Grown booth. Potatoes, sour cherries, asparagus, and more traveled here to show off the bounty of our state. And of course, you can't talk about Washington produce without talking about one of my personal favorites, blueberries. So my name is Michaela Staples Hughes, and I'm with Sakuma Brothers. We're a grower, and we're here representing the Washington Blueberry Commission. Why is it important for you guys to be here at a show like this? I've been able to talk with potential customers from all over the world, from Japan to Korea, Taiwan, in addition to seeing some of our existing domestic customers and potential domestic customers. Why should we continue to work with international partners? As we see blueberry markets emerging and acres in increasing Increasing. It's really important for us to be competitive on a, a larger scale and having those international markets is allowing us great market access to be able to remain viable and competitive in this industry. Months later, we met up with Michaela again on the farm to see where the berries were at and where they were headed. You're on Sakuma Brothers Farms here in Skagit Valley. We're right outside of Burlington, Washington. These are Aurora blueberries, which is a late season variety for us. As you can see, there's still a little bit of red here on the bush, so we'll be picking these probably beginning next week. Although many of these blueberries will end up fresh or frozen in grocery stores here in America, some of them will hop on a plane and head all over the world. Historically, we focused our exporting efforts on Southeast Asia. So when you're considering these blueberries are going to go either by sea or by air, 
all the way across the world. We have to be really selective in the quality that we choose. So weeks in advance, even months in advance, we're planning out by the week and by the day what field, what variety, what packs we'll be sending. We're really focused on how do we get the best quality, the best shelf life, the best taste, and the best experience for our consumer really from the very beginning. So we begin by kind of going through, identifying what fruit we'd like to allocate to those export orders. And then of course the fruit has to be harvested. The feeling that you have when you see that truck drive away and you know it's headed to the airport is, is a, a pretty great feeling and really exciting for all of us at Sukumas. I think there's a real sense of pride as a Washingtonian knowing the rest of the world seeks our products and that the soils here are so incredible and the communities that agriculture creates are so valuable. There's so much pride in that to think of the products that you might pass on the road or the farmer that you know down the, the street, that their products are going to other consumers outside of our country. There's, there's so much pride that we can have as, as citizens of this state in knowing these products are desired because of the quality, because of the safety, because of the care that the farmer takes in growing these crops. Coming up, I'm making a special Washington gooey duck stir fry at the Bali Asian Bistro. Good job, oh, Chrissy. Thank you. I know I'm doing you're all, all the work over here. <laughs> no, you're amazing. <laughs> We're back at the Bali Asian Bistro with owner Jeannie Choi in Airway Heights. Growing up in South Korea, she grew to love cooking. And during her travels throughout Southeast Asia, she learned so many new techniques and dishes from the people she met. Today, her menu here at Dibali serves as a love letter to the many people and places she fell in love with during her travels. I'm very happy for that everybody feels like welcoming to the Dibali and that they feel like what I had been experienced at the Southeast Asia. I want everybody having to walk in into Dibali door, they feel like the same experience. I really want to share those kind of experience with our right. community. Yeah. Although we didn't travel around all of Southeast Asia like Mama Jeannie, we did get a small taste of it during our trip to Vietnam. Our experience uh, visiting Vietnam oh, that's wonderful. was really incredible and w it just blew my mind how many Washington grown ingredients get yeah. exported there. Yeah, in there. Yeah. In there. They also had a grown some of them what we having. But like we having wonderful four seasons, so which is like apples and the pears and a seasonal fruits and a veggies. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get it in there. Yeah. So it's really we appreciate it. Washington State had grown those kind of veggies and fruits. So a lot of people are having the same experience of what we in here though. Today, Mama Jeannie and I are going to make another dish with gooey duck. A gooey duck is a kind of a large clam that grows in the waters of Washington State. Washington exports gooey duck to Southeast Asia, where people use it in their dishes as a delicacy and special treat. This is the strangest looking thing I've it's, ever seen. It, it's called a gooey duck and uh, <laughs> it's a very expensive uh, ingredient. It's okay. a Southeast Asia and all the Asian reason. I'm gonna be sure the how to, we're gonna be how to prepare to clean. Okay. So this one is you can open very easily mm -hmm. like that way. Yeah. yeah. So you're gonna be having to clean this out and and also you can have a take so off the skin. The outer yes, layer and uh, we're gonna be having to clean this area. So you're gonna be had to cut like this way, mm -hmm. and we're, we're gonna be had to blend the hot water 15 to the 20 second. Oh. Okay. Then it's gonna be lock the juice and the uh, tender meat was okay. inside. And now you're gonna be had to cut as like this small pieces, oh. and your desire. So you can able to cook right away. It's easy to clean, so yeah. don't be afraid. It's everybody can. That was able to easy. Do. I mean, it is. You it did is. it, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so ugly, <laughs> but delicious, right? It is very juicy and it is very tender and the sweet flavor. Yeah. I guarantee you will like it. What are we doing today? So we're going to be having to make for about the stir fry. Okay. Um, but we're going to be using for the all the Washington grown veggie with the gooey duck stir fry. It's yeah. easy. We start by adding some chopped green onions, walla walla sweet onions, Yakima carrots, broccoli, and stir fry sauce. Next comes the soft veggies, some mushrooms, peas, and zucchinis, 
red bell peppers, and bean sprouts. Last comes our Washington grown gooey duck. And then how long does this? We're only going to be cooking 30, to 30 seconds yeah, to the one very minute. Long, right? Yes, because a dough's uh, veggie is very tender and also we already been blanched about the gooey duck yeah. so if you're going to be cooking longer than a one minute or two minutes usually the meat was tough yes good job oh, thank you i know i'm doing you're all, all the work over here <laughs> no, <you're amazing. laughs> beautiful thank you so much yes with gooey duck and that was <laughs> super simple Not bad. Mm -mm. That's really good. <laughs> a little mm. bit of, you can taste the ocean in the gooey duck. It is good. You know? Yeah, it is good. But the it vegetables is very are nice and crispy. Mm -hmm. It is very juicy and tender too. Yeah, you're right. That's a worst season. Happy. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, I was so glad. <laughs> to get the recipe for Dabali Asian Bistro's gooey duck stir fry, visit wagrown.com. Coming up, I'm learning how Vietnamese importers are bringing high quality, Washington grown fruit into the country. How do you say pear in Vietnamese? Pear, lay. 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 And we're in the kitchen at Second Harvest trying Chef Laurent's lemon blueberry olive oil cake. We've featured so many incredible chefs on this show, but every single one of them has one thing in common. They all had to start somewhere. That's why today we're visiting Spokane Community College, where the students of the culinary program are preparing an Asian food pop-up lunch under the watchful eye of someone you may recognize. I'm here with Laurent Zarati, and we're at Spokane Community College. I know, Christine. Familiar face, of I course. Know. Yes. It's a different environment. I know. I'm You're at here. the office today. You are. Yes. So tell me what's going on here. Well, we do really concept driven by students, and this concept is a food festival, so action station in front of customer, and uh, it's International uh, Week. So we are focusing on a different uh, part of the world, mostly Asia, made by the students. Made by the students, yes. and you are their instructor. Yes, I am one of the six instructors here at SCC. We uh, have a, a curriculum of two years with six quarters. In my household, we don't really cook a lot, and when we do, it's really plain, so it's definitely something I wanted to get into. It's definitely like being on one of those cooking shows. You yeah. know, every, every test or anything, you just get anxious. You feel like yeah. you're waiting for for what the chef says and yeah. it's awesome. It's driven by students, so they have to be tolerant, patient, they have to be understanding that, well, it's not uh, like a restaurant yeah. where you, uh, your expectations are very high. But come on down and like support the students. Completely. Now let's see what people think about the students' food. That yeah. flavor is good. Extraordinary. <laughs> that flavor is good. It's a little sweet and spicy, just like how it's supposed to be. They always do amazing food. It's really affordable. And then you're helping students learn, so it's like yeah. a win-win. Are you even chewing? Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm not. It's so good. It's so good. I would have these every day. <laughs> it's approved. Very good. You're the teacher. What grade would you give them? 3.8, 3.9. <laughs> Out of, out of four? four? Yes, out of four. It's I like nothing. it. Yep. Yep. And look at the line of people You're behind us. I know. That's great. Busy day. Eat up. Getting Washington products all the way from the U.S. to Asia isn't an easy process, and making sure they arrive fresh and in great condition takes a ton of work. That's why Christy and I split up to chat with some Vietnamese importers about what makes Washington produce worth the effort. What's really cool is I come in here, I see all these products. Yes. So you guys deal with a lot of things. But standing right here mm -hmm. beside us, I see a box from my home state, from Washington. So what <laughs> okay. do we got here? Correct, ladies. Yeah, so uh, this is brought up. Uh, our company has imported. Our company, Trung Minh Thanh, distributed in Vietnam, and totally our consumer love it. Vietnam uh, is a tropical climate, so mm. it's really difficult for us to grow the kind of berry, like the blueberry or okay. blackberry, it's really difficult. Vietnam people think that and trust and believe that the product made in the Washington is the best product, and this means that Vietnam people, they trust about the quality of the product. Nice. Yeah, so any product made in or ring for the Washington, they will uh, confident. 
and uh, exciting to buy it. Me and my family are a big fan of blueberries. We we had Eastern uh, this product a lot. It contains a lot of uh, antioxidants. It kind of a superfood. While Tomas checks out the warehouse, I'm getting a very warm welcome from Tony Fruit. Here they import all sorts of fresh Washington produce, from apples to pears and even colorful potatoes. Tony Fruit's owner told us that it's well known that the Washington apple is the best, and they also love the many colorful varieties of Washington potatoes. A big part of keeping produce fresh is keeping it at the right temperature. That's why they took me around Tony Fruit's facility to see how they're making sure consumers are getting only the best produce. Ooh, cold. The product only stays in the warehouse a day or two before being repackaged and shipped out to sellers. Next, we went into their packing house, where fruit is repacked into smaller containers for the consumer, while here, they once again check for quality. If they find any fruit that isn't great, they remove it to make sure consumers only get the best. They also separate different colors of potatoes into packages. How do you say apple in Vietnamese? Bao. 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 And potato? Bao. Uh, How do you say pear? Pear. 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 Le. 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 Yes. Le. <laughs> We are in the kitchen at Second Harvest Food Bank where we get to taste some amazing dishes. My taster is here. Uh, as always, I love hanging out with Chef Laurent Zarati. Thank you. And my co-host, Tomas. Here we are again. I know. Yes. So fun. It's what a hard job we do. have, right? Right. Oh. It's so <sighs> difficult. I know. And I loved the fact that you got to go to Florida. Yeah. What was right? exciting was to go and to see a lot of brands and things that you see in the grocery store all the time and to just see the work and effort that people go into trying to let other people understand what we have. You know, even just promoting Washington products. Like, look at these blueberries we grow. Look at these yeah. potatoes. Look at our asparagus. It's a massive undertaking to make yeah. sure that the world understands how great our produce is here in a Washington. A lot of great people. So we're blessed that uh, you are developing yes. some of the, the recipes. Exactly. So what, yeah. what is season, it today? Which is great, yeah. you know? Well, we're talking about blueberries. Huh? Yeah. So we decided to do a blueberry and lemon cake. Uh, it's, nice. it's, it's a very, <laughs> a very different cake in, uh, in the way that there is no butter in the cake. We oh, okay. make that cake with olive oil. Ooh, so okay. it has a, a little more different richness. It's not yeah. as, uh, as rich as the, as the butter, mm -hmm. but it's better for you also. And I must say that uh, this cake is uh, really a, a base for multiple cake that you want to use. Uh, you don't want uh, to add the lemon, skip oh, the lemon. Okay. No blueberries, put raspberries yeah. in there or oh. something else. Lots of, uh, yeah. of, uh, of different options with that recipe. It's a great, great cake. Uh, awesome. Nice well, I can't wait to try it. <laughs> Washington blueberries are the absolute best and they pair well with lemon and cake. And cake. So let's see and, uh, how, let's, how we make it. Yeah. It's going to be delicious. <laughs> Well, doesn't that look Ugh. unbelievable? And those blueberries. Mm. 
Here we go. Look at that. There's nothing I love more than lemon and blueberry uh, and. Oh, and look at the color. It's so pretty. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's full of mm. goodness. You might look at this as a traditional American and think that this is going to be like a, a, muffin. a big muffin yeah. that's going to have a lot of sugary punch. And it does not. Doesn't. Yeah. No. Uh, it is more of a cake-like Yeah. Like a cake, texture. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And there is almond flour in the recipe, so mm -hmm. it, it brings a little more sunless, you know, to the mixture. And then they don't really dry out, you were saying. They are. Wow. They, they, because of the olive oil. Because of the olive oil, yeah. It's a, it's a very good recipe. It's very bright. Nice. It's mm -hmm. light. It's yeah. just... How many of these can you have? Oh. Think? We'll bring out the pan. Let's oh, I don't know. <laughs> Two? Three? Well, no. I don't think <laughs> we're... so good. We're, we're, I think we're going to all finish our plate right. right now. I think so, too. Yeah, the blueberries are... Yeah, see they're, the teeth? They're, they're tart. Yeah. yeah. Which it gives I a love. good balance, mm -hmm. like you said, Thomas. That uh, tartness of the blueberries gives a good balance with the, the sweetness of the cake. That is not overwhelming. That's delicious, Laurent. Good. Thank I'm you. Glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> you can find that so recipe good. where, where at, in, our, in the website. On the website. <laughs> Wagrown.com. Wagrown.com. The recipes. <laughs> All right. Make them yourself. Let us know what you think. Thanks, mm -hmm. Laurent. You're going to love them. You're going to love them. Thanks to the farmers who grow our amazing food, Washington's trade partnerships are strong, productive, and they have a bright future. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. We'll see you next time.